good morning students welcome back to online classes of analog communication so uh, in the last class we have discussed about uh, the introduction part of your transmitters and receivers good correct i hope you have all uh, watched the video properly uh, and uh, in the last class we have seen what are the different uh, classifications of your transmitters they were based upon your uh, uh, applications whatever you are using so there are classification based on your modulation types what the modulation you are going to use or the services types and the third one you have seen the frequency ranges so different different frequency ranges will be there depending upon your particular applications correct so after that we have seen the am transmitters that is amplitude modulated transmitters in that amplitude modulated transmitters we have seen two types first one is low level transmitters or that are completely based upon your power levels so low power level transmitters and high power level transmitters so in low power level transmitters we have seen the block diagram and uh, we have gone through all the blocks uh, clearly okay then uh, we have seen two uh, the low level power low power level transmitters where it is having a drawback that in that system the efficiency will be lower okay and due to that one uh, we uh, because uh, this class c amplifiers cannot be used most widely so due to that one your carrier, your carrier frequency will be suppressed plus your one of the side bands will be got suppressed so if your side bands are completely suppressed then there is a chance of getting distortion and uh, loss of data so as to overcome that one what we are going for the next uh, transmitters that is your high power level transmitters or high power level am transmitters so what was the basic operation of your uh, low power level transmitters ma what they used to do there first the carrier frequency has been generated then modulated frequency msi signal they both are modulated then they are amplified but in high level power transmitters what they are doing they are taking the carrier frequency they are first to modulate uh, yeah, they are amplifying that particular uh, carrier frequency then your msi signal is also amplified then they both are modulated and due to that one you will be getting the good efficiency and gain also will be increased there you had in low level power uh, modulate uh, low level power transmitters you had less gain or the lower gain here you will be getting a good gain correct and one more topic we have also seen that is about your negative feedback am transmitters where you will be having negative feedback why as to get the envelopes because uh, getting the envelope or uh, the proper envelope of your message signal is very very important so at the feedback part we are using an envelope detector where your modulated signal is again given to your envelope detector which finds that whether if you are having or getting the proper envelope what message signal has so if there is any distortion you are getting any distortions at the envelope side you can remove that and then again it is uh, given to your modulated device okay so this is how we have seen the last classes of that one once again i'll give the link of that particular video in case of any doubts please go back to that video watch carefully okay next in today's topic we are going to discuss about fm transmitters okay by the name itself you know what is an fm transmitter correct so what is what is first fm frequency modulation what is frequency modulation ma you are varying your carrier signal in terms of frequency correct or not your fre carrier frequency uh, carrier signal frequency is varied in accordance with your message signal that is your frequency modulation here also what is an fm transmitter means a transmitter or the fm transmitter is a low power transmitter which uses frequency modulated waves for transmitting the sound and these transmitter transmits the audio signal through the carrier wave by the difference of frequency by the difference of frequency means by the varying of frequency means your carrier wave frequency will be varied in accordance with your transmitting sound that is nothing but your message signal so the fm transmitter is actually a low power transmitter which will be using which waves i am using here fm waves means frequency modulated waves 
and uh, for transmitting the sound signal so which kind of modulation i am using fm and this transmitter will be transmitting the audio signals then that will be varying in terms of your frequency okay i hope you are clear with fm transmitter or uh, in simple words you can also give one more definition for that one a fm transmitter where the frequency of the carrier is varied in accordance with the modulating signal so i have made this a simple uh, definition for you people okay this is was about your fm transmitter the definition and these are some basic terms that are very much important for that that this transmitters are used specially for radio broadcasting so we have classified our transmitters depending upon the modulation so this is second depend upon on the your modulation this is second type that is frequency modulated transmitter and these transmitters are mainly used for your services that are radio broadcasting and in terms of your frequency they are used in very high or ultra high frequencies correct so these uh, these fm transmitters are mainly used where ma in very high or uh, ultra high frequencies where that is nothing but in radio broadcasting okay so these are mainly used for tv sound broadcast because as to get the tv sound broadcast we will be using this one and the frequency range of this fm transmitters will be from 88 to 108 megahertz now remember this one this is very important the fm transmitters are assigned or uh, we can also say for commercially fm broadcasting can be done in the frequency range of 88 to 108 megahertz of frequency band okay i'll repeat it once again these transmitters are used for radio broadcasting in very high as well as in ultra high frequencies second one you are you these are used in tv sound broadcast and they will be using in the frequency commercially the frequency range of this fm transmitters that will be from 88 to 108 megahertz of band or the frequency band okay i hope you are clear so this was about the introduction part of your fm transmitters so these transmitter i hope you remember that uh, frequency modulation also in last uh, in the second chapter we have discussed uh, angle modulation we are having two kinds of modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation so as to generate as to modulation demodulation we have said that is nothing but generation and detection so for generation of your fm uh, signal or the frequency modulated signal we had two types one you remember i think i'll give that link also just go back to that link and check it out so there we are having two methods to generate your frequency modulated wave that is direct method and indirect method indirect is nothing but your armstrong method okay so that are the two types in for getting your or generating your frequency modulated wave so based upon that modulation used or based upon that modulation types we have using here also we are having two types of fm transmitters okay for getting the modulated wave we are used of direct method and indirect method there for this transmitter also based upon the modulation used there are two types of fm transmitters okay in that f first one is directly modulated fm transmitter and the second one is indirectly modulated fm transmitter that indirectly is nothing but your armstrong method or armstrong modulated or armstrong fm transmitters so these are the two types of fm transmitters let's discuss one by one okay the first one is your directly modulated fm transistor this is the basic block diagram of your fm transmitter one okay it is in direct method remember this this is your direct method in this direct method you are first having the reactance modulator reactance modulator in the name itself you are saying that uh, you are using inductance over there okay so first you are using an uh, what will say audio signal that is your message signal is given to your reactance modulator then again that modulator is given to your carrier oscillator carrier oscillator is nothing but your crystal oscillator uh, or the oscillator which generates your carrier frequencies right then that is given to your buffer amplifier why we are using buffer amplifier as to stop different variations correct we are stick to one uh, particular frequencies which will be having low gain and high impedance and this particular block is called as as excitor section okay this is excitor section this is the frequency multiplier and this is power section so your transmitter block 
इन डायरेक्ट मेथड इज इन थ्री ब्लॉक्स फर्स्ट वन इज एक्साइटेड सेक्शन सेकेंड वन इज योर फ्रीक्वेंसी मल्टीप्लायर एंड थर्ड वन इज योर पावर सेक्शन ओके आई डिस्कस ईच एंड एवरी वन स्लोली बिकॉज ऑफ यूर प्रेजेंट वॉट विल से इन दिस क्लास इफ विल राइट ऑल फुल ऑफ डॉटर इट विल बी लाइक ओनली थियोरी विल बी विजिबल सो आई एल बी रिपीटिंग वन सेकेंड प्लीज लिजन इट केयरफुली एंड मेक ए नोट ऑफ दैट वन ओके so first one we are having the transmitter is mainly having i have said three blocks in direct method exciter section frequency multiplier and power section in exciter section the first one we are having the carrier oscillator okay uh, then first we are having the reactance modulator then we are having the carrier oscillator then we are having the buffer amplifier okay so in this uh, carrier oscillator generates what it will it will be generating a stable frequencies Yes or no? In the last class, also I have discussed in this carrier oscillator we are generating this use. This is used to only to get a stable frequency, and it should be able, uh, should uh, and it should be able to change linearly when there is a full modulation. Okay, so it should be able or it or it should be uh, having that ability of linearly changing the frequency when it is fully modulated. But what this carrier uh, oscillator generates, it will generate only one single stable frequencies. Okay, this is the first part. Second part is buffer amplifier. This buffer, why we are using this buffer amplifier? As I have already said, to get a constant, a particular frequency. okay to stop the changing of frequencies and it is will be having a constant high impedance and will be having a small gain means that is nothing but you are having low gain in this one and second comes to your frequency multiplier what is meant by frequency multiplier you have to multiply your frequency okay you might be having a less your audio signal your message signal is of less frequency you have to multiply that one so we need some frequency multiplier as to increase your frequency so so for that reason we are using this frequency multipliers okay but these frequency multipliers should be of whole numbers only like 2 multi 2x multiplier or 3 multiplier 3x multiplier or 4able multiplier it should not be of 1.5 multipliers this is very important multiplication can be done only by whole numbers only they cannot be in points like i have to multiply 1.5 times i have to multiply 2.2 times it should not be like that it should be of only whole numbers i have to multiply uh, my signal by two times so two times multiply or four or five or six like but it should not be in decimals and uh, points okay that is the important and but it has to be and one more important thing but it has extremely low efficiency and because of that low efficiency this cannot be wide spread and this is one more point huh? so we are using this multipliers but this multipliers will be having the having extreme low efficiency and that cannot be used for wide spread of any communication so that is one of the drawback of that one. then last section is about your power section so what is the power section why we are using driver amplifiers as to how much power required for driving that particular signal that is used to for that one so power will be amplified here also then the output our amplifier means the modulated signal requires an amplification uh, for transmitting to the uh, from transmitter to the receiver through a feeder antenna so we require some power amplifiers so the final section is about power amplifiers as to develop your carrier powers okay we have to carry that particular message signal no so we have to develop some powers so that's the reason that is the last section we will be having your power amplifier power section so so these uh, all this block diagram is about your your uh, direct method frequency modulator transmitters correct so here uh, the operation is here that the master oscillator is followed by the os the oscillator whatever we are using here is your master oscillator okay this master oscillator is followed by buffer amplifier as to avoid loading of any extra frequencies okay so this buffer amplifier is again followed by a frequency multiplier means it will be multiplying with the chain of frequencies either you may be using two frequencies either fourable or six it completely depends upon the application so this buffer amplifier is again uh, followed by 
chain of frequency multipliers also we can say if i require uh, uh, some eight uh, um, eightable frequency suppose i require eightable frequency so what i'll do i'll use two to three frequency multipliers which are of multiple of two digits so again i'll use two to three different frequency multipliers okay so this buffer amplifier is again followed by chain of frequency multipliers okay so as to get the required frequency level either it may be one or it may be two frequency multipliers which completely depends upon your application so it depends why we are using this as to get the required frequency level so since this frequency multiplier is followed by the uh, what is the crystal oscillator or uh, master oscillator the carrier frequency as well as your frequency deviation they both get raised so we are be having some frequency deviation in this one for sure because uh, uh, we are using an fm transmitter we know how we have to get this frequency uh, modulation index by using the frequency deviation only so if you are using this frequency multiplier both your carrier frequency plus your frequency deviation they both will be getting increased by some or they by they will be getting raised up by some factor n so i'll say so because of that one only they will be reaching your frequency range and what is the frequency range of your fm transmitters that is 88 megahertz it should be starting from 88 megahertz so as to reach that particular level we have to use this one but we are having a drawback over here the carrier frequency that is uh, the carrier frequency of your reactance modulator may drift due to three reasons here i have given the three reasons i hope you are clear with this block diagram you are having a reactance modulator from where you will be getting your message signal that is given to your carrier oscillator or the master oscillator and then it is given to the buffer amplifier then chain of your it may be depends upon how much frequency level you require or either one frequency multiplier or two to three frequency multipliers then it is given to your power section where you have to boost up your power levels for carrying your modulated signal right but this block diagram or the direct method what i am showing here is as having some back some drawbacks what are they but the carrier frequency of the reactant modulators can drift this may be having some drift so as to uh, because of these three reasons one is variation in voltage supply in case if there is some variation in the voltage supply you may be getting the drift and the second one is if there is variation in temperature and humidity there also you will be getting some uh, drift or aging of your electronic device if your electronic device whatever you are using it is old or it it is not used for some time so that's the reason also you will be getting some drift in your carrier frequency so as to avoid these dis disadvantage or the drawback we are going for the next one that is nothing but your Uh, automatic frequency control circuit okay in this one we will be going for the automatic frequency control because it will be controlling your frequency so this is the block diagram of your automatic control frequency afc okay this is also in directly modulated fm transmitters with afc here what you are having the first one is reactance modulator or the reactance transmitter whatever you can say that then we are having a master uh, oscillator then a buffer amplifier from here again a buffer amplifier is there it is a feedback circuit type then you are having frequency multiplier and class c power amplifiers as to ampli uh, as to amplify uh, the power which is required to transmit to your modulated signal from transmitter to the receiver so the required stability can be achieved because it is not stable you are drifting over in that one where in directly modulated fm transmitter so as to get that required stability we are going for the or we are achieving that required stability by using your automatic frequency control circuit okay so what happens here you are taking a sample of circuits a sample of signals from this one Uh, stable crystal oscillator first uh, this modulator a uh, modulating signal message signal is given to a reactance modulator where it will be uh, given to the next to the master oscillator which generates your carrier frequency and a buffer amplifier and a limiter that is nothing but uh, you you will be having uh, some particular limit over there then it is given to the frequency multiplier here first and this carrier frequency is again given to your buffer amplifier 
okay so this difference frequency output from this is amplified okay this this is mixer nothing this be this is mixer ma this is nothing but what you are mixing here the difference frequency you are mixing okay and this is the oscillator stable crystal oscillator which will be having some frequency of 3.5 megahertz it we are using a stable crystal oscillator and this frequency and this frequency will be mixed up over here in the buffer amplifier then it is given to the if amplifier that means what it do it will be intermediate frequency will be amplified which will be boosted up and then it is given to the discriminator circuit and the discriminator circuit will be operating at to 500 kilohertz only in this case remember this one this will be operating at 500 kilohertz now this will be multiplied and uh, it will it will be uh, what it will be doing it gives the output a dc voltage which will be positive or negative that is dependent upon your uh, uh, pre described or uh, what will say prescribed value whatever you are getting if you are uh, getting the frequency greater than that of your 500 kilohertz then it will be a positive if you are getting less frequency the input actual frequency is less than that of your 500 kilohertz then it will be a negative frequency so it completely depends upon let's dc output voltage it either it may be positive or negative okay depending upon the input frequency either it is greater or lesser so this output resulting output is again given to the modulator again an oscillator it is given to the oscillator okay then it is given to a buffer amp then a frequency multiplier will be used from frequency multiplier it is again given to your what do you will say ma class c amplifier power amplifier as to boost up your power and then it is given to the transmitting antenna so this is how your direct modulator method will be working with your automatic frequency control so overall you are controlling the frequency over here because if you are using directly master oscillator your frequencies will be changing there is no stability and there will be drift because of three reasons that i have given so as to avoid that drifting we are using this uh, one more after modulating we are using a stable oscillator they both will be comparing and it will be uh, uh, Starting the uh, changed frequency of your carrier oscillator, then it is given to the discriminator where it will be operating on 500 kilohertz only, and it shows whether it is positive or the negative. Okay, so the DC output voltage is positive or negative. That is completely depending upon whether the actual input frequency is greater or less than your prescribed frequency. That is nothing but your 500 kilohertz only in this case. Okay, so this is how you will be getting that one. so due to this one uh, what you'll say the resulting change in the oscillator frequency which tends to cancel the frequency drift whatever the drift you are getting in the frequency that will be cancelled by using this part or the this block okay and this provides a correct prescribed voltage frequency to the uh this to the transmitter at the transmitting antenna so due to that due to this circuit you will be overcoming the disadvantage whatever you are getting but in case in case if you are having a small drift also here which will be negligible okay you might be getting a small incidentally uh, some uh, frequency drift in this case also but that will be considerably uh, um, what will say reduced or you can skip that one okay a small uh, level of your what you'll say um, frequency drift may be having we may be having a getting a chance of getting this uh, frequency drift but that can be considerably neglected so this is how you will be getting your direct modulated frequency transmitter okay you are getting a frequency modulated transmitter first we have seen where we will be getting some drift so as to remove that drift changing uh, of that frequency we are using this again afc automatic frequency control transmitter clear next the second method is your indirectly modulated fm transmitter what is indirectly indirectly modulated transmitter that is armstrong method see in this indirect method or in the armstrong method fm transmitter the stability of the carrier is guaranteed here what you are having we are not having the stability we are have to apply one stable oscillator to this master oscillator then we have to subtract and again you have to get the discriminant over here we have to dc we have to get the dc control voltage again it has to given back it's 
long process okay for getting the frequency modulated transmitters but it's indirect method there is a for sure that the stability of the carrier signal is guaranteed because we are using a crystal oscillator over here so the crystal oscillator here the block diagram is over here crystal oscillator you are getting here and a buffer amplifier which isolates the crystal oscillator from rest of the system okay it it will be stopping at a particular frequencies it will be blocking over there then what you are getting the message signal where your message my message signal nothing but your voice signal that is amplified either in terms of voltage or power then it is given to a pre emphasis circuit which restricts the message signal to some band limit okay we are band limiting this particular signal up to some 1.5 kilohertz or 15 kilohertz okay here pre emphasis will be given i hope you remember uh, you don't know uh, i think what is pre emphasis and all i'll tell in next class so the pre emphasized message signal uh, sorry ma i'll repeat it the message signal is given to the audio or the power amplifier or the voltage amplifier where it will be amplifying that message signal okay and then a pre emphasized sig uh, it is given to the pre emphasis block where it will be restricting the message signal to the particular band means it, if uh, suppose i'll give example of 15 kilohertz so up to 15 kilohertz it will be having some particular band so this pre emphasized message signal is a low pass filter then it is given to the uh, a phase modulated signal so here what you are doing first message signal is given to a power amplifier then it is pre emphasized it is boosted up then it is given to a low pass filter where you will be removing the uh, noises okay in case of any noise which is present then it is given to the amplifier so here your both uh, carrier as well as the message signals will be uh, buffered or amplifier then it is given to a phase modulator where your phase modulation is done then it is given to your this phase modulator generates a signal of a frequency which is only a fraction of your desired frequency so what is the important part over here why we are using a phase modulator because this phase modulator will be generating a frequency which is only a fraction of your crystal frequency that is what is what is the frequency that you require actually we have said that we will be having a stable crystal oscillator so stable crystal oscillator means what is the frequency range of your fm transmitters that is nothing but 88 to 108 108 megahertz correct so that uh, we are we have to generate that particular frequency range so this phase modulator what it will be doing it will be generating a signal of frequency which is of your desired level okay and that is nothing but your from 88 to 108 megahertz so since the available we are having why because we are having a crystal oscillator okay so why um, plus why we go for a phase modulator because this crystal oscillator cannot be directly giving the frequency range or the carrier frequency of uh, some megahertz okay ma'am i'll repeat it once again see we are using a crystal oscillator to get the stability correct right? then uh, this is all about your message signal block we are boosting it up and giving up after the, this thing we are using a phase modulator because this phase modulator will be generating a signal of frequency in uh, our a fraction of frequency which is equals to uh, some megahertz that is required to your fm transmitter because if you don't use phase phase modulator directly we are using only crystal oscillator it won't be producing 88 to 108 megahertz of frequency so that's the reason we are going for the phase modulators then afterwards the phase modulator this uh, after getting the desired carrier frequency then it is given to the frequency multipliers and these frequency multipliers may be your one stage or more stages that is completely depend upon the application how much frequency you need to be multiplied again to reach your particular uh, signal so this frequency multipliers are again used that are completely one or more stages that depends upon your particular application so after frequency multiplication the desired power level is uh, achieved by sending this uh, uh, signal from driving power antennas uh, sorry driving power amplifiers class c amplifiers okay so this is how your indirect modulated fm transmitters will be working so what is the uh, what uh, 
what do you i hope you understand about this uh, indirectly modulated fm transmitters see uh, i'll repeat it once again fm transmitters nothing but frequency modulated transmitters in this we are having two methods direct method and indirect method in direct method first what we are where you are having very first part we'll go back this one where you'll be having three blocks Exciter section, frequency multiplier, and power section. In this one, what happens? We are the master oscillator. What we are using, it is not stable. The carrier frequency will be changing. So due to that one, we are getting the drift in your frequencies. So as to avoid that one, we are going for the AFC automatic frequency control, where we are using a sampled stable crystal oscillator, which will be uh, giving you a, a sampled um, stable. carrier frequency then again it is given to your like a feedback circuit ma huh? given to the frequency multipliers and then power amplifiers this was about your direct modulator method and in indirect or the armstrong method what you are having the imp very mo most important things two are there first one you are uh, getting the stability we because in the direct method we didn't got the stability so in the uh, indirect method we are getting the stability which is for sure guaranteed when that is gone by, uh, obtained by using crystal oscillator and second one is your phase modulator we are using because phase modulator generates a signal frequency which is equal or a part a fraction of of your Uh, frequency range of your FM transmitters because the frequency range of your uh, FM transmitter is 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz. So as to get that particular high frequency, we are using these phase modulators. So after phase modulating, you are giving it to the frequency multipliers. One or more stages of frequency multipliers that completely depends of the application. Then it is given to the driver amplifier where. we will be using class c amplifiers only which is uh, this driver amplifiers as to drive or the take off your message a modulated signal okay then it is given to the power amplifier as to lift up the power level of your modulated signal then it is from the feeders you will be giving it to the transmitting antenna where it will be transmitting your fm signal to the receiver so this is how the method of your transmitter fm transmitter so we have seen am transmitters and fm transmitters i hope you are clear with this part please do watch the videos i'll give the links also and give the attendance in case of any doubts ma please do let me know okay we'll uh, finish this class today here itself thank you